It's even more foolish to think that politics and religion don't mix. All things in life, including politics, are inherently religious. All issues of decision making, even in the family, the church, or personal decisions, are inherently religious. The problem is that no two competing theories of right or wrong, or religion for that matter, can be correct. There's no middle ground. I've said all that to say this. The first step in voting biblically is to realize that there is no neutral or gray area when weighing someone's standard of right or wrong compared with the Bible. They either agree with it or disagree with it. Either someone's going to follow God's standard for truth and morality, or they won't. You can't play picky-choosy with God's laws or standards. He says you're either fully for Him or fully against Him. You can't serve God along with something else. So knowing this, we must realize that what or who a particular politician uses as their standard for truth will directly reflect his decisions. It will ultimately be the standard for right and wrong in all of their decisions. Now, if we truly want to vote biblically and honor God with our vote, we have to judge all political candidates not according to party, but according to principle, his principles of right or wrong. Now, what does he use for a standard? Well, God requires all people, including politicians, leaders, and all civil rulers to use his word, the Bible, as their standard. And God doesn't change his standard according to someone's religion or nationality or color. It's the same for all people. He's written his law on the hearts of all people and each person, especially leaders, and they are accountable to follow that standard in every area of life. Whether government, church, or personal, it's always the Word of God. Now this doesn't mean that the office of president rules the church. It doesn't mean the president has to write laws that forces everyone to become Christians. It certainly doesn't mean that there isn't a proper separation of church and state, or that the church should rule over the civil government. It simply means that all institutions, regardless of what they are, need to have God's Word as their ultimate standard.